Behind me stands the 1,200-foot mountain fortress of Masada. This is the site of the last holdout of the Jewish people against the Roman Empire many years ago. But today, this stands as a symbol of the resolve of the nation of Israel. And nowhere is that resolve more practically demonstrated than in the family of arms that are produced by IWI, Israeli Weapon Industries. These are the arms that keep the nation of Israel secure today, just as resolute as it was when the very last Jewish people decided not to become enslaved by the Roman Empire. The products that we make today here are the ones that I'm most proud of. Our aim is to become not just uh, the second best or the second largest in the market, but to lead the market. Today we are the systems house of the IDF, meaning all of the small arms that IDF purchases comes from IWI. This is, this is a tough one for me to be impartial about, i got to be honest with you, because I own one of these. This course is the Tavor. It was, again, an IDF uh, fielded system that had been in place for probably a decade before it came to the United exactly. States. But this is, of course, uh, the Tavor bullpup. Uh, the version I've got in my hands right now it is the U.S. version. That's, that's exactly the U.S. version, okay. semi-auto only. I know there was, ergonomics was a huge deal with the Tavor. With not just the idea of, well, it's a more comfortable gun, but the idea of it's, it's a gun with better hit probability. This design is built for the best uh, holding position possible. Why? First of all, first position is, like I said, six holding points. First point is on my shoulder. Okay. Then, our grip, right hand or left in this situation. And second is the hand, left hand. Third, my your, forearm. Your forearm there is kind of putting pressure on, exactly. this, on this trigger guard. My cheek, and then on the magazine, which we don't have. Here. Right. Then I have a lot of holding points, a lot more stable platform. And still remember, we have here a long barrel. This is a 16 and a half inch barrel. Right, right. The charging handle is in front. Of course, it does not reciprocate. Our magazine release is in the rear. You can go with your left hand, reach the pedal, release the magazine if you want to keep your magazines sure. in a dump bag or whatever. Right. The second option, in firing position, drop the mag, new mag, ah. continue firing. And that's how simple it is. Yeah. Most of our focus is on military rifles and military weapons. So the, the guns are based on military standards, military quality, and the, what the consumer in the States will get is actually the same gun, same properties, same qualities, as the guns which are used for the military, which normally is more demanding, not in terms of looks or in terms of cleanliness, but in terms of, of, of how the gun behaves. Want to know what's happening at American Rifleman? Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll be right back. We started with the product designer that gave us the first, first shape. At the final stage, we realized that uh, we have to make the shape uh, to be uh, ergonomic to the user. Because this is the, the vision that we come with. Because we believe that if the rifle is ergonomic and is friendly to the user, the hit probability of the, of the user will be greater. So this, this is our belief. So all the distances we measured ov over 200 soldiers from the army to find what is the right distance between the uh, buttstock and the, the pistol grip, what is the right uh, distance from the cheek to the rifle to get uh, right to the, to the sight and to hit the target. So what you see here is, is very general, very early uh, prototype, but still the shape is very similar to what we have today. So, so with bull pups, one of the downsides can be that if you're a lefty, uh, some bull pups 
uh, have to be shot with right hand ejection. Of course. But the Tavor offers the option of being truly left or right hand operation depending on how you set the gun up. Uh, that's a big benefit. The thing about the, again, the bullpup is that once you've got the barrel, which is from here to here, but all of your bolt and your operating parts are back here, the weight bias of the gun is shifted is in the rear. To back into the, the rear third of the gun. So that's really an important point. What you do first is you have a button here. You press this button here, which is a pin. You pull it out. It doesn't come off. It's, it's captured. captured. Right. Open your buttstock and that's it. That's your system. Field takedown. Excellent. Of course, there is a second takedown to take out the bolt. Sure. The bolt cam and the firing pin. One other thing I wanted to cover real quick was show me that with any Tavor that you buy, you've got an included set of backup sights. Exactly. We have backup built up sights inside the rail, integral. And of course, the Tavor can come with different caliber changes. Uh, for the US market, right now we have the 556x45 and a conversion kit to 9x19. 9 millimeter, right, yes. right. And then we've got a lot of readers, a lot of viewers that I know have been asking me this question. Can you confirm that later this year there may be a third caliber option for Tavor owners? Yes, later this year we're going to come out with a 300 blackout. The Tavo design and Tavo development, it doesn't stop. It's continue and continue and continue. And each day we are talking about new products or new features or new development because we need to improve our products and to give an answer to our customer needs. If you ask me what's more important, in my, my opinion, the accuracy of the gun or the ergonomics of the gun, most people will tell accuracy because this is easy to measure because it is very classic to talk about. No, to me ergonomics of the gun, which is the ability to shoot fast and to shoot accurate, I'd say that, that the reliability and ergonomics are number one. Tell us a little bit about what I've got here. This, uh, this is uh, obviously very Tavor looking, but uh, even a little smaller and a little yeah. lighter. So what you see here is the smaller brother of the Tavor. It's the X95. A special operation said they wanted a smaller platform. And they asked for IWI to do a change to make them a, the same mechanism in a smaller platform. And a couple of other features. Now, I, I noticed that one of those other features right away is that, of course, the mag's back here. It's still a bullpup, but the mag release has been moved from this location up here to the to the index thing, which is very familiar for AR For operators. AR users, yeah, exactly. So this is one of the changes. The second change is the size of the weapon and the barrel length. I also notice, in addition, also, of course, the magazine uh, release location. Not only is it in the AR-15 position, but it's, it's, a, it's a press in button, but yeah, it, it can be pressed in from either side. Uh, so that's, that's really nice. It's totally ambi, but it's in the AR position. Even most ARs can't can't accomplish that. Now, one other thing I noticed a lot about, about the X95 is that it looks to me like, you know, as opposed to the Tavor, all of this is molded in. This angled, uh, large trigger guard here and the pistol grip are molded in. So that's, that's, one that's not something you can change about the gun. Exactly. On the X95, it looks like that might be a replaceable piece. Yes. Well, the IDF asked for two options. So we gave them one pistol grip and also an option to change it with a simple screw to a big guard like they have in the Tavor. So if I'm a hopeful guy who loves the Tavor platform and sees this as a really uh, cool additional gun to, to purchase, maybe I'm gonna hope that there's a 16-inch barrel version, uh, semi-automatic only, that's coming to IWI US soon. Yes. Okay, excellent. I'm taking that as, as, a, as an absolute promise. Thank you, Galat, appreciate <laughs> it, appreciate your time. I can't stress enough how important good small arms are for the IDF. This is a country that if it weren't for a good military, would be wiped off the map.